T-minus one minute and counting. Rock, range is green. Forty. Stable at step three. Twenty-eight. Twenty-five. Status check. Go Atlas. Go Centaur. Go DMSP. Thirteen. T-minus ten. ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. We have ignition and liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket carrying the Defense Meteorological Satellite Program mission for the United States Air Force. You are hearing the voice of Marty Malinowski providing launch vehicle ascent data. Let's Booster's listen in for mission progress. Control on the EU system. Check for pressures, pump speeds look good. Booster engine continues to operate well. The pitch program is complete. Now find the zero angle of attack phase of flight. Body rates look good. Bus and battery voltages are stable. Mach 1. Max Q. And booster has throttled down as expected. Current altitude is 9.8 miles, downrange distance 2.5 miles. Current velocity is 1360 miles per hour. Booster engine continues to look very good. Body rates are controlling right down the middle. Injector pressures, pump speeds, right within band. And closed loop stern has been enabled. And we have fired the RCS pyro valve. Signatures look good. Starting to ramp up to pressures now for that system. Currently accelerating at 2.9 Gs. Altitude is 34 miles. Downrange distance, 36 and a half miles. Current velocity is 3,876 miles per hour. Q alpha limited steering is completed. And booster has throttled back again, right on schedule. Engine response looks good. Coming up on our 5G throttle segment, currently accelerating through 4.7 Gs. Bus and battery voltages look good. Boost phase cooldown is underway. Pump temperatures look good. Currently throttling to maintain 5 Gs.
and we've throttled back to our 4.6G throttle segment. Boost phase cooldown is complete. And we have Pico. Engine shutdown looks good. We have retros and stage separation. Looks like a clean sip. Locks and fuel pre-start are underway. GN2 purge fire into the RCS is complete. We have ignition and full thrust on the RL-10. Coming up on payload for and jettison momentarily, and we have jettison. And Centaur has begun closed loop steering. Body rates look good. All the two tank pressures have vented down as expected. This is Atlas Mission Control at T plus 40 minutes, 52 seconds into the flight. We've just heard Marty Malinowski report the successful execution of events comprising the early part of today's mission, and all systems continue to operate nominally. Our next event, Centaur Main Engine Cutoff, will occur in approximately 11 minutes. I'm joined now by Lieutenant Kathleen Rhodes from the U.S. Air Force Defense Weather Systems Directorate. Lieutenant Rhodes, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Thanks, Matt. It's a pleasure to be here. So can you tell us a little bit about how DMSP fits within the overall nation space portfolio? Absolutely. DMSP-19 will observe Earth's land and sea areas, including soil moisture, snow cover, albedo or earth shine, ice, dust, and sea surface winds. DMSP-19 will also observe the Earth's atmosphere as well as space weather. DMSP sensors provide imagery in visible, infrared, and microwave bands to enhance information available to the warfighter. Through these satellites, military users find, track, and forecast weather systems over remote and hostile areas for deployed troops. So obviously DMS play, plays an important role in that overall portfolio, but what are some of the unique capabilities and features of the DMSP constellation? DMSP has two primary sensors, the Operational Line Scan System, OLS, and the Special Sensor Microwave Imager Sounder, SSMIS, both built by Northrop Grumman. The OLS provides visible and infrared cloud data, with each scan covering an area of 1,800 miles. The instrument is able to cover the entire Earth in about 12 hours. The SSMIS detects precipitation, surface temperature, soil moisture, and provides all weather capability for worldwide tactical operations and is particularly useful in typing and forecasting severe storm activity. The spacecraft also carries a suite of additional sensors which collect a broad range of meteorological and space environmental data for forecasting and analysis. DMSP-19 will join the DMSP constellation, providing world-class space-based terrestrial and space weather data to support U.S. forces and its allies around the globe. The DMSP satellites operate in a sun-synchronous polar orbit about 847 kilometers above the Earth. The nature of the polar orbit means the satellite is able to observe any place on Earth twice each day due to the Earth rotating beneath the fixed orbits. DMSP will continuously collect data as it orbits the Earth. The satellite is always collecting imagery of cloud coverage, as well as atmospheric moisture, temperature, and other data. So that's a lot of capability that DMSP provides. How many satellites are there in the constellation? Well, in its 50-year history, 41 satellites have been successfully launched. With today's launch, DMSP-19 will join a constellation of six other DMSP satellites. In conjunction with the other national agencies, DMSP has been instrumental in the development of meteorological technologies and continues to provide relevant, actionable information for modern military operations. DMSP is the longest running production satellite program ever. DMSP satellites have saved billions of dollars and countless human lives as a result of timely weather forecasts. That's quite an illustrious history for the program, um, and obviously it's been invaluable to the Air Force as well as to the warfighter. Are there any things that you can describe for us as far as how that affects our daily lives? Well, through this constellation, military weather forecasters can detect developing patterns of weather and track existing weather systems over remote areas. DMSP also alerts civil and military communities of anticipated hazards in space to satellites and personnel. Weather forecasters use DMSP data to predict regional and global weather patterns, including severe thunderstorms, hurricanes, and typhoons. 
Well, thank you. I mean, that's a good overview of the overall program. Uh, as far as yourself, for if we have any younger viewers that are watching that are interested in maybe a career in science, technology, engineering, or math, tell us a little bit about your background. I've always been interested in math, from playing card games that involve math to taking various math courses. It's been a passion of mine. So I decided to pursue a math degree at the University of Maryland Eastern Shore. So how did that lead you to the Air Force? Well, shortly after enrolling at UMD, my brother enlisted in the Air Force. And it was at his graduation that I witnessed the sense of pride and honor that was instilled in my brother and his fellow airmen. Seeing my brother graduate ignited my interest in becoming an officer. I decided to complete my undergraduate degree and commission in the Air Force. My career in the Air Force has been nothing short of amazing. I'm a project manager and have had many opportunities presented to me because of the military. I've been able to oversee DOD projects that directly help the warfighter. I go to work each day knowing that the work I accomplish serves a higher purpose. Lieutenant Rhodes, I really appreciate you being here to provide us some insights into the DMSP program. Thank you. This is Atlas Mission Control. We're at T plus 10 minutes into today's flight, and all systems continue to operate nominally. Our next event, the first Centaur main engine cutoff, or MECO-1, is scheduled to take place in about five minutes. While we wait for our next event, let's take a look at some of the events that led us to where we are today. Another Air Force satellite system is making daily contributions to the lives of every American. The Defense Meteorological Satellite System routinely provides its military weather pictures to the public. For the past 50 years, the Defense Meteorological Satellite Program, DMSP satellites, have fulfilled the military's most critical requirements for global, atmospheric, oceanic, terrestrial, and space environment information. Through these satellites, military users find, track, and forecast weather systems over remote and hostile areas for deployed troops. We've had a long-standing partnership with the U.S. Air Force dating back to the 1960s. We have delivered almost 50 satellites over 50 years. Last August, an Air Force C-17 Globemaster III aircraft transported DMSP Flight 19 from Sunnyvale, California. And here it is, the C-17 carrying the nation's next weather satellite for the United States Air Force touches down here at Vandenberg Air Force Base, California. This is so exciting. We get to continue the proud tradition of flying DMSPs for the nation. It feels absolutely outstanding. We had a great team that transported it uh, down. We're going to transport it to our payload integration test facility. And there we'll go through uh, about a seven to uh, nine month process where we'll actually do some final tests. And it feels great to be actually out here and uh, beginning this close to launching our satellite and actually putting uh, our mission up in space. Fantastic day all around all coming together to, to bring this very important satellite to Vandenberg to continue weather operations for the nation. DMSP's F-19 satellite has received comprehensive service life extension program modifications to address all known life limiting factors and maximize on-orbit operations. As far as acquisitions goes, this is like the most exciting thing you can do is to see something come to fruition. I've worked the OLS, the primary sensor on the on the DMSP satellite, since 1972. It's a very, uh, very re rewarding program. We've been working uh, hand in hand with our contractors, with our aerospace personnel, with the, our Air Force team. Everyone has come together. I uh, couldn't ask for a better team or a more solid team. We've got a satellite up there right now that's been running continuously for 18 years. It's been a uh, very good investment for the country as far as, uh, as, far as providing weather and, and space environmental data. Energy is sky high. Oh, I've got second lieutenants out here who just graduated from the academy all the way through my aerospace support who have been on this program for almost as long as the program itself. It's 52 years going. Uh, we are the longest running production satellite in the world. It's very gratifying to me to see the younger generations coming on and, and being so interested and in picking up so quickly on the on the stuff. It's, it's, it's a good thing. We always so, remark on how incredible that is. We right. have lieutenants and these young airmen coming That's in right. with the responsibility they're given. Oh, yeah, yeah. You've That's, seen it through the oh, years. Oh, yes, definitely. And how does it make you feel to be a part of that team with the Air Force and the contractors and civilians? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, and, and on, on this program, even compared to some other programs that I discussed with my colleagues, this program has a history of absolute cooperation and openness between the uh, the various co-contractors and the, and the Air Force. It's, uh, 
it's a very good relationship of, of trust that's been built up over the years. On the support side of being in the military, you don't get to see a lot of action that uh, you know some of our war fighters do. But this is how we contribute to the fight. I know our war fighters are going to appreciate everything that this capability is going to give them. It's a, it's a rewarding experience to know that we're contributing in our own way to the fight. Go DMSP! Go DMSP!